The Old Testament reading this morning is from Deuteronomy chapter 30, starting at verse 15. See, I have set before you today life and good, death and evil. If you be obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I command you today by loving the Lord your God, by walking in his ways, and by keeping his commandments and his statutes and his rules, then you shall live and multiply. And the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to take possession of it. But if your heart turns away, and you will not hear, but are drawn away to worship other gods and serve them, I declare to you today that you shall surely perish. You shall not live long in the land you are going over the Jordan to enter and possess. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death blessing and curse. Therefore, choose life, that you and your offspring may live, loving the Lord your God, obeying his voice and holding fast to him, for he is your life and length of days, that you may dwell in the land of the Lord, swore to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. Here ends the Old Testament reading. Praise the Lord, all nations. For great is his steadfast love toward us. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. The epistle reading this morning is 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 1 through 9. But I, brothers, could not address you as spiritual people, but as people of the flesh as infants in Christ. I feed you with milk, not solid food, for you are not ready for it. And even now you are not yet ready, for you are still of the flesh. For while there is jealousy and strife among you, are you not of the flesh and behaving only in a human way? For when one says, I follow Paul, and another, I follow Apollos, are you not being merely human? What then is Apollos? What is Paul? Servants through whom you believed as the Lord assigned to each. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. So neither he who plants nor he who waters is anything, but only God who gives the growth. He who plants and he who waters are one, and each will receive his wages according to his labor. For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field, God's building. Here ends the epistle reading. Hallelujah. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us. A fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Hallelujah. We stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Glory be to thee. Jesus is speaking. You have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not murder, and whoever murders will be liable to judgment. But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. Whoever insults his brother will be liable to the council, and whoever says you fool will be liable to the hell of fire. So if you are offering your gift at the altar and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while you are going with him to court. Lest your accuser hand you over to the judge and the judge to the guard and you be put in prison. Truly I say to you, You will never get out until you have paid the last penny. You have heard that it was said, 
you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lustful intent has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. For it is better that you lose one of your members than your whole body be thrown into, the, into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. For it is better that you lose one of your members than that your whole body go into hell. It was also said, whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that everyone who divorces his wife, except on the grounds of sexual immorality, makes her commit adultery. And whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Again, you have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not swear falsely, but shall perform to the Lord what you have sworn. But I say to you, do not take a, an oath at all, either by heaven, for it is God's throne, or by the earth, for it is God's footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not take an oath by your head, for you cannot make one hair white or black. Let what you say be simply yes or no. Anything more than that comes from evil. This is the gospel of the Lord. We pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you that we can come into your courts with praise to thank and praise you for all that you give us, your love, your care, your protection, your guidance, all the gifts that are ours through Christ our Lord. And Lord, bless our hearing today and bless our living this week and throughout our lives so that in Christ we may give you the glory for it is in his name that we pray, amen. Don't mind me if I smile as I begin. I do this because when I talked to Pastor Beck, I think it was on Friday, and he asked if I'd be willing to have the sermon this morning, he said, well, I've been preaching on Jesus' words from Matthew 5. But you can preach on whatever you want. And then he added, well, almost. I would like to preach today on a favored psalm of mine. Maybe it's a favored psalm of yours. Psalm 121. The psalmist writes, I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He would not let your foot slip he who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor will the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. This is our text. This psalm has been called different labels. Some would call it the traveler psalm, as you heard at the end, going out and coming in. Others call it the soldier psalm because it talks about God's protection and care for his people. And of course, it's also a pilgrim's psalm. I'll get that out of the way so I don't make the P noise so bad. It's a psalm for pilgrims. And I would like to suggest today that it's a song for us. I will lift up my eyes into the hills from where cometh my help. That's the way many of us learned it. When I go to church on Sunday morning, I'm going to the hill to look to the hill of Calvary and see there the cross. And I know that that's where God's goodness and grace and mercy and love and care come. 
And what an invitation. I will lift up that, my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. A wonderful assurance and something that you and I can look forward to today and each day of our life as we follow our Lord Jesus Christ. But if you're a textual critic, the way the verse is written, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills, and then it's a question. From where does my help come? From where does my help come? All right, how are we going to answer that? The pilgrims going up to Jerusalem, someone in the crowd or someone on their way also said, from the maker of heaven and earth. That's where my help comes from. The God who made the hills, not the gods who are on the hills. Mount Zion is on a hill in Jerusalem. And that's where the temple was built. But there were other hills in Jerusalem where other places of worship were built. Someone says, when I lift up my eyes to the hills, he's not talking especially about Jerusalem or about Mount Zion, but he's talking about all the hills. And the person who responds, my help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. The Lord of Mount Zion, the Lord where the temple is built. The Lord where you and I are going to worship. And then he goes on, the Lord is your keeper. And that, by the way, some have suggested should be the name of this psalm. The Lord is your keeper. My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip he who watches over you will not slumber. Again, if you'll permit me to smile, I think that's a verse perhaps written especially for me. People my age and maybe younger have trouble walking. I have a good friend who said, you know, I stumble over my shadow every day. <laughs> he will not let your foot slip. And as I thought about it today also, I want to thank you for building this rail. Because I thought one day when I preach here, I'm going to be a visiting pastor who goes over the edge. <laughs> Falling, not steady on his feet. Wondering, can I hold on? have something to hold on? He will not let your foot slip. Wow, what a promise. What a blessing. God is walking there with us. We can take his hand or he can take our arm and guide us and help us as we take our steps. And for the pilgrim going up to Jerusalem, for the old people who are wondering, well, can I make it this time without falling? They are assured that they can, with God's help, make it to the place of worship, to the temple. A year or more ago, my wife and I and one of our sons and his wife went to Jerusalem and my wife and I especially had difficulty walking always being afraid that we might stumble and when you go through the markets there are cobblestones not smooth pavement there are cobblestones where it isn't easy to walk again a reminder Lord help me help me as I walk And then the psalmist says, he will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. Again, what a powerful message for us. God, you're always awake. You're always caring for me. I can be confident as I go to sleep and as I wake up, you are there and you're watching. You're guiding, you're leading, you're enabling. And what good news that is for me, day or night. And for the children of Israel, as I think about this particular verse, he will neither slumber nor sleep. He's talking to the children of Israel. And we think of that image of the cloud. The cloud that led them by day and that burned by, by fire at night so that he was there with them, guiding them, enabling them to look to him day and night. 
and they could be confident. And the Lord will take care of you. The sun won't harm you by day. The moon by night. Now, it's not particularly a good time to talk about heat in Texas. But during the summer, if we preached on this sermon, we would have reason to say, Lord, give me some shade. In fact, if it's 110 in the shade, it's hot. I need some protection. Help me. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. God is there to bless you, to keep you. Not so that you have heat stroke, and also at night, so that the polar effects of the moon don't drive you crazy, as a lunatic, if you will. God's going to take care of you. The sun by day, the moon by night. And you can be assured, as the psalmist says, the Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. Does that mean I'm not going to have to deal with the flu? Does that mean I'm not going to have to deal with other illnesses in my life? Does that mean I'm not going to have to deal with issues where people try to confront me and pull me down away from following Christ? No. But the Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. That's life insurance, if you will. Life insurance at its best. From your born day till the day that you die, God is going to be there walking with you and blessing you. And then finally, the Lord will watch over your coming and your going both now and forevermore. I don't know which Bible commentator it was who said, you know, that's my favorite verse. God is going to be there for me as I come and as I go. I had the privilege of caring for a friend who was a member of our Lutheran Hospital Board when I was a chaplain at MD Anderson. And on his deathbed, I was privileged to read Psalm 121 to him just before he died. That forever promise. I will be with you, your coming and your going, both now and how long? Forevermore. Now and for eternity. Now and forever as you live in the home that God has prepared for you through his son, Jesus Christ. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills. From whence cometh my help? And as you and I think about it, and we'll talk more about that in Bible class, think of the hills that are lifted up in Scripture. But especially think of the hill where our Lord and Savior climbed that hill, willingly gave his life so that we might be forgiven, so that we might have hope and so that we might have that forever promise that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Lord, what a gift. What a promise. What a blessing. So I'm going to challenge you all. Whenever you come to church from now on, think of this psalm. I'm going up to the hill. I'm going to look to the Lord. And there I will have all the promises that he describes through the psalmist. His love, his care, his protection, his guidance, and his forever blessing. And I pray that as we think of that, and as we meditate upon it, we will truly be grateful to the God who gives us that promise through Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, we thank you. Thank you for your assurance, your blessing, your care. Guide, lead, and direct us, for we are yours through Christ, in whose name we pray.